Let's get this party started. Oh my goodness, this is one that I've been waiting for. Welcome, 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 welcome to your special edition live stream of the Tech and Chill Show Unplugged. I'm your host, Ben, from the Lover of Tech channel, and we are, of course, live. Oh my diddy, this is going to be a hype one because we are doing a live hands-on review of the Google Pixel Fold. Yep, Google's first Pixel foldable device. We don't know if we're going to get a flip, but straight into it, this is pretty much what we're going to be working with. I'm going to pretty much be taking you through all the different phases of what a review is all about, which is pretty much getting hands on with the design, build quality. We're going to discuss that, what my experience has been with it so far. We're going to be talking about the display experience, the displays, right, which is cover display as well as the inner display as well, how I've been feeling with that. We're gonna be talking about, of course, the performance. This is Tensor G2 powered. We're gonna be talking about the camera because we have thrown down and done a detailed camera comparison and experience with this. And it's very, very interesting how the things have come out with the camera experience with videos, photos, daylight and low light. So we're gonna break that down and talk about that as well. We'll talk about the software which, oh yeah, the conflicts, the conflicts. We're gonna talk about the software experience. We're gonna talk about the battery and we're gonna give the overall two cents because at 1,749 pounds starting price in the UK for the Pixel Fold, what does it really mean for this year foldable? Because there's a lot of things happening when it comes to this year foldables, right? Especially in the UK, we've got the established competition and also we've got some heavy here underdogs like Honor that are coming through with some big guns, right? So what does it mean for the Pixel Fold? But this is the place where you're gonna get such treatment. No one else does this when it comes to brand new product launches and we do this live in 4K UHD. So if you are streaming and you do have the capacity and the devices, select higher than 720p HD, go up to 1080p full HD, go up to 1440p QHD, and then all the way up to 2160p 4K UHD for the crispiest live stream on Tech YouTube right now when we're doing a special hands-on review. Shout out to the live crew right now. I'm gonna get into the comments and acknowledge you guys that are here early. And also shout out to the replay crew. This is a live stream but the quality of what you're gonna be seeing is pretty much looking like a top tier pre-recorded video. So I will leave chapters in here so you can get straight to the parts where you wanna get down and get the best information about the Pixel Fold and hopefully it helps you get a perspective of what Google are on about when it comes to their first foldable. Boom, that intro was sick. Talk to me nice. Talk to me nice. Let me see what my people are saying in the comments. I really, really appreciate everyone that's showing out tonight. It means a lot and it means the world. I'm seeing people show up, man. I'm seeing people show up. We've got 20 concurrent viewers. Please do share out to socials. Let's get people on here. This is gonna be a big one. I, I live for these moments, man. And <laughs> I'm kind of sick, but I've been popping medicine like back to back to back. So shout out to the younger bro and everyone that's been helping out, man. We've got younger Matt in here as well. We are going, we'll show you the sap, man. We're deep today, we're deep today. Fresh bringing out the caution. What's good, what's good, bro? Bringing out the cautions, bringing out the cautions. Yes, my guy Fresh. Fresh, it's a full circle moment for us, man. You got the 50th anniversary hip hop edition of the Pixel Fold. Bro, you specifically, the real ones that know, know that you have been Mr. Pixel from time. If it weren't for you doing your Pixel content, I wouldn't have been on Pixel. From when we linked up and knew each other, yeah? From 2017, you've been rocking Pixel from time. So I, I'm so glad you're getting your accolades and your flowers, bro. Um, appreciate you being here early as well. Hello all, what's good? Hello, hello, hello. Bradley says, let's go, let's go for sure. What's good fam, what's good fresh? Younger Matthew in the house, what's good? Gino Red, let's go, yes, yes. Hey, yo, what's good? 4 p.m. perfect timing. This is why we do this. When it comes to the special uh, edition live streams, we make sure we have a nap early, we'll come through. We always do it basically midnight UK time to give you lot on the West Coast that eight hour time difference. And also the guys on the East Coast, the five hour time difference. It gives you a lot more of an advantage because I know my guys over the, <laughs> in North America, when you guys show up, you show up and you show out. So I really appreciate it. 
appreciate that. Love the box, I appreciate that, man. Team Picks are really showing up well. Well, hello, 7 p.m. for me. Yes, I'm seeing your East Coast people. Intro, East Coast, yes, sir. This beat is fire, I appreciate that. Let's go, bro. Damn, bro, you got all the angles. Bro, I'm gonna show you all the angles. I came on smoke, because I feel like it deserves it, because it's Google's full circle moment for us, man. And you know me, I like to showcase these stuff properly. Um, uh, made it to uh, made it to the flat just in time for this. Boom! Appreciate that. Tech Kit Mike watching the stream on a Pixel Fold. Make sure you turn up to 2160p 4K UHD. And we're going straight in with the first super chat, man. Tech Kit Mike with the twenty dollar super chat. Chat twenty dollar super chat. Let's go, crispy 4K UHD. That's how we do. We don't play when it comes to making sure that you are all getting the best visual experience when it comes to live streaming. Um, when you do these direct donations every time, it motivates me to make sure my streams are not low jack because I want you guys, it's not mandatory for you to do this, but it motivates and it supports us so much. So I appreciate you doing that, man. I appreciate you doing that. Daily, what's good? Intro was fire. Yes, yes, really, really appreciate that. I'm always trying to elevate a little bit much, a, a little bit each time that we do these things. So really appreciate that, man. Let's go. Always supporting, bro. Appreciate that. What's good? What's good? All love, bro. Yep. Love to see people winning. Love it. This pixel fold is legit. 7 p.m. in the islands. What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? Yes, 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 yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So yeah. Fresh was saying we got all the angles. Obviously, you got me front and center. This is the A74 f1.8 35 millimeter lens. I love that combo. It's really, really something that works well. But really, the start of the show is this one here. That's where the audio is coming through. This is the A7S3 top down. You've got a pixel fold with the Tamron 28 to 70, so we can obviously zoom in if we want, but we've got a right, right, right amount, and we can zoom in further if we need be. Obviously, we've got camera free as well, which is on the left here. Younger Matt's on there, A74, Sigma 50mm f1.4, zoomed in with the Super 35 crop and the clear image zoom. One of the things I love about Sony. And we've got the camera 4 here as well. And that one is the ZVE1 on the 85mm f1.8. Obviously, check out the Instagram stories. You get all the full details on this. But we've got a surprise one for you as well. Boom, we've got one right here, camera number five. This one is the Panasonic Lumix S5 X Mark II on a 24 to 70 f2.8 um, Lumix lens. Yeah, we've got five cameras up in here, man. So yeah, we're working some stuff, we're working some stuff still. I thought let me just be cheeky and um, go all out. Then obviously you can see all the four main cameras as well. So <laughs> yeah, you're getting all the angles. We do this here because I wanna be held accountable. I want to be held accountable, right? I want to be held accountable because we're doing this live so you can see how the experience is so that there's no low jack stuff. So I'm going to look into the comments and then we're going to dive straight into it, man. And we can do a recap and let everything go in. Um, e and the rest of the US carrier purchases are waiting for 18th. Um, Cabra always, bro. Hello, bro. Talk to me, dog. What's good? What's good? What's good? Thank you for joining. Share it out. We've got 27 concurrent viewers. And without wasting time, we are pretty much going to get into the groove of things. Whoo! Pixel, pixel fold. My goodness. Here we are. Here we are, right? Pixel fold. Here we are. Pixel fold. Here we are. Let's start from the outside. Let's work our way in top to bottom, move the mouse out of the way, the design. Google, you did it, you did it. I know certain people are gonna disagree and we can have two types of discussions in this particular situation right now. We can have two discussions where we talk about what is the, what is the best foldable form factor to what's your favorite. And I'm gonna try and make justifications of why this is now my favorite foldable form factor and where it can also cross in into being the best, right? It can cross over to being the best. And I'm gonna make some justifications and you're gonna probably see why. And I've done, I've done this before. So 5.8 inch display. The 5.8 inch display for the outer cover display finally works with an aspect ratio that is wide enough to be usable. I cannot stress enough how important it is for this to have been pulled off. 
That's the first one. I don't really have a problem with the nature of how the display and the outward cover display is. Yes, maybe in terms of the rounded nature here and it looking a bit thick on the left side, it can look a bit visually odd. Whereas on this side here, again, this is nitpicky, but we get into the details as much as possible, right? Here, right, looks more visually in line compared to here. But I'm, I'm genuinely okay with that because that front cover display is beautiful, is bright, is sharp, and it is a smooth 120 hertz display. I repeat, it is a smooth 120 hertz display. This passport form factor is it, period. Like, yes, it could be taller. We've got an Honor Magic VS there. We can show a comparison in terms of how that looks like in height. Right, and also compare it to the the TV remote that is the Fold 4, right, which I like but I don't love. And next part we're going to be looking at in terms of the design and the build quality that really sets it apart is the zero gap. Oh, look at that. No gap getting in there, meaning no annoying little bits and the minimization of dust that goes in here as well. The minimization of dust that goes in here as well. And one thing about dust and the protection against the elements, I believe this is an IP58 based foldable. I think this is the first foldable to do a full water protection and dust protection as well. I'm gonna double check that because off head I'm going here, but find out for me. But I believe this is the first foldable that takes it up above the IPX8, and we actually do get some form of dust protection against the elements. But a zero gap hinge and a zero gap fold, this just fills it. Next is the thinness or, yeah, so IPX8 actually, yeah, apologies, IPX8. So I'm, I stand corrected on that, IPX8. The thinness, this is no more thicker than my Galaxy S23 Ultra. And you may not believe me, but I'm gonna show you right now. We're gonna demonstrate it. We've got the cameras there for you to really see the difference. This is no more thicker than my S23 Ultra. This being the thinnest foldable yet, it makes such a difference that when you're using it in the close form factor, it literally feels no different to the smartphone that I'm used to using, which is the S23 Ultra or the Pixel 7 Pro. In fact, there is actually slightly more weight, but that weight actually adds to it feeling more premium. And when we talk about feeling more premium, what am I really bringing it down to? I'm bringing it down to the fact that Google, you listened. You listened. You brought the matte finish back. You brought the matte finish back. Your last matte finish was the Pixel 4 and 4 XL. Thank you for bringing it back. That gives me some form of hope for the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro. I'm so glad you listened now. I do wish you went for the matte finish for the camera frame like you have on a Pixel 7, just because as you can see, Smudge City. <coughs> Smudge City. It's Smudge City, right? So it's no biggie, you're not really looking at the back of the phone, but it is Smudge City. And I do wish that it wasn't polished metal, but it was just brushed instead, you know? Matte all the way, satin, brushed. Because the problem with this is, and this is the same problem I found on my Pixel 7 Pro, right, this is gonna be prone to scratches. <coughs> this is gonna be prone to scratches, right? And that's the unfortunate thing. Whereas the Pixel 7, because it's got a brushed finish and not the glossy finish, right, it ain't prone to those scratches. It ain't prone to those smudges. And you can see it right there. And I'm gonna I'm show you a little thing right there if you can see it. If you can see it, maybe you won't be able to see it, but there's a little scratch here already on the frame of the pixel fold. Ask me how I got that, I don't know. I don't know. And I know you guys are gonna be saying you should be using a case, but I'm telling you the way it feels, I don't wanna cover this baby up and call me risky, but I live life like, you know, <laughs> raw. <laughs> we like it raw. So, they did listen. This feels like, though, this feels like the most premium foldable I've held. And I've held the Find N2, right, from Oppo. I've, I've held the Find N 
and that really set off the passport form factor. But Google, to me, have taken it to another level. It feels unapologetically pixel. It has the identity. But my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, does this look good? This is a progression. They need to touch up and pretty much take elements from the Pixel 7. But away from that, this is top tier. Protection against the elements, the passport form factor, the outer cover display, the materials being used, right? The zero gap, the IPX8, and also the matte finish, and the pixel identity and look. This is my favorite form factor for affordable, right? It's my favorite form factor for affordable. But here's where I'm gonna try and justify why it's probably the best form factor for affordable, right? Thickness. I'm gonna bring an example of a traditional smartphone. Cosine here, we've got the Galaxy S23 Ultra, right here. I'm gonna take the S Pen out. And we're gonna demonstrate something so you can see. So first of all, we're gonna line it up right here. You should be able to see it. First of all, we're looking at the thickness of it, right? And yes, it is thicker than the S23 Ultra, but it's no more thicker than when you compare it to the camera module. So already, in terms of the thickness, it's already in a place where it's a big advantage, <laughs> right? We know the thickness of a device is what makes a huge difference to usability. So that's one. It feels no thicker than my Galaxy S23 Ultra with a case on it. So I'm really, I'm willing to take that hit. Without a case, on the Pixel Fold, with a case, it is the same thickness. So that's already a dub. But let's just then compare what we just saw with camera five right there, All right? Height. You see the height difference? I'm gonna turn it around. You see the height difference right there? I love the shorter display. So you get the same width. You get the same width. We're gonna show you the width one. You get the same effective width as the S23 Ultra. But it's a shorter display. What does that basically mean? What that basically means is, oops. What that basically means is this. It is much more friendly to use in one hand. It is so much more friendly to use in one hand. All right, we're gonna switch up to the top and you're gonna see what I mean. You can see that it's much easier to get to the corners. Whereas, you see, I can only make it up there. I can't even make it to my Discord icon, right? So, Google intentionally did it in a way where you're getting the benefits of the width, but you can actually go corner to corner. Genius. That, to me, now becomes the best foldable form factor now. You get the width of what you're used to with your five, 6.8, 6.7, 6.9 inch displays, 6.8 inch displays. But without the drawbacks, because it's a 5.8 inch display, you get the correct aspect ratio that matches. And also, the height makes it easy and friendlier to use in one hand. I really broke it down and I deeped it, and I realized that Google, smart, smart. And I'm gonna show you another free game of why this also works. YouTube videos. Most of the people that are watching, I'm gonna put my boy Fresh's one because I've got to show him a homage and respect for just what's happened with the fold. My guy's got the <laughs> 50th anniversary edition, right? I'm gonna show you how much of a game changer this outer display, aspect ratio and form factor works. Actually one of 400 right? 
with a plate. But look at this. That's it. It's already filled. It's already filled. Look at that. Pixel Fold has been rumored and talked about for probably years at this point, but it's finally here. And this one is a little special. It's a little different, and it's actually one of 400 made, honoring 50 years of hip-hop. Now, I'm on day three of using the Pixel Fold as my primary device, and it's jumped ahead of the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the Galaxy S23 Ultra and my rotation of devices. And so far, it's offering a unique experience that no other phone has ever given me. And that's but we're going to switch to this camera here. I actually own. You know, right. I briefly held the Galaxy Fold 4 and the Flip, and I think the Pixel Fold has the best form. That is beautiful. Mainly because the Galaxy Fold's outer screen just felt too narrow to use, in my opinion, and the Flip. That is beautiful. This form factor makes viewing videos and scaling to videos work to perfection. No issues. Shout out to the homie Fresh, my boy Courtney, with the 50 year edition of the Pixel Fold. Like, look at that. I'm watching YouTube videos, and if anyone's ever watched YouTube videos on the outer cover display, right? I'm gonna open it up, I'm gonna turn it here. This is the perfect aspect ratio for your normal video. 16 by 9, 18 by 9, it fits perfectly. This is not something you're experiencing on the other traditional foldables, right? So, when I say functionally, yeah? Switch back to camera two. When I say functionally, this is the best foldable form factor it crosses over from being my favorite to being the best for these functional reasons, from the physicality, the thinness, the height, the width, the aspect ratio, but also the functionality when you're using it with your software, right? It is absolutely no different to using a normal phone. This is all I've wanted. It don't take away nothing from using this inner display. None, zilch. I can still enjoy my end of display as I planned, right? But all I want is the ability to just have a very functional outer cover display. And that's exactly what Google have done. That's exactly what they've given. And that's exactly what they've put out, right? So when it comes to the design and the build quality, 10 out of flipping 10. And I don't mince my words. This is the most premium, the best feeling foldable I've ever had. And I've gone through foldables. My first foldable was the Galaxy Z Fold 2. If anyone's gone back and watched those videos, you know I'm about foldables, right? If smartphones were my base, and what the main stuff I was actually reviewing where I'm getting new smartphones every month, no flex, right? I'll just pick the best foldable and use it. But when it comes to the design, build quality, the feel, the form factor, the usability, especially in that way that I've just shown you, right? This is the king. This is the new king of foldables when it comes to that. And I know, I know what you're going to say. Fold 5 is around the corner, and I'm going to have that in. We're going to run this and double back, of course. But I'm just saying right, right now, yeah. <laughs> Google, you stole my heart. Google, you stole my heart. So for the build and the design, how we've broken it down, yeah. Google, top tier A1. Now back to the chat, let's see what everyone is saying. Let's see what's good, let's kind of round up. And this is pretty much what we do. We do a take for each section, then we'll come back going to the comments, pretty much see what everyone is saying and what's good. Now then, we've got the homie TC in the house, lover of cars, of course. It says, the passport form factor is the best in my opinion. I absolutely agree. Yes, what's good, Ike? What's good? What's up, everyone? What's good? No full dust, unfortunately. Yes, correct. I do stand corrected. Matte black everything. I agree. The thickness is what um, beats all the others so far. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. The thinnest foldable, and it's no thicker than your S23 Ultra with a case. I'll take that. I will absolutely take that. <laughs> um, Google should have called the Pixel 4 the Pixel, the Pixel Passbook. 
I think if BlackBerry hadn't, you know, co-signed the passport name, I think that would have been a better name, the Pixel Passport. Road dog all day. <laughs> Naked, yes. <coughs> all you need is a skin. I think for normal people, getting a skin would be good, but because I shoot content with this on a regular basis, having a skin is an inconvenience. I really want to be showing it in its normal form. So for me that I shoot content, I don't really use skins on that sense. I can recommend them. I'm a big fan of skins, yeah. Yep, it says no one is unfolding. On, no, we unfold it. But it's the, I mean, the Pixel Fold is a great name. There's nothing issue, no issues with it at all. And so mostly wanting affordable for the new experience. Oh, trust me, once you have it, you can't go back in my opinion, man. Affordable experience is amazing. Shout out to Film by Fresh. Yes, the homie Fresh. Really appreciate you, bro. Fresh, what's good? Pals Tech, yes, yes, yes. You're making me think about the Pixel 4. That's what we're here for. That's exactly what we're here for. If Samsung fails to adapt to the passport design, it's an L for them. I think, I think it is, I think it is, I think it is, I think it is, but we're gonna to get to the software because it's not all guns and roses. It's not all guns and roses with the experience of the Pixel Fold. And you know me, I'm gonna call it as it is and really put it down to that. Next section of what we have here is of course the display. So what do we have here? with the display. We're working with two displays here, 5.8 inch and I believe 7.8 or 7.6 inch display. Please double confirm that for me as well. Um, your boy's been sick. I've been doubling back, doing back to back content as you've been seeing, the unboxing, the camera comparison. Um, <coughs> I'm not feeling well, so hang with me here. Hang with me here. We've got two displays. 7.6 inches. All right, so we're on the money. 7.6 inch inner display using ultra thin glass. And we've got the outer cover display, which is 5.8 inches. Um, aspect ratio for the outer display, please. Aspect ratio for the outer display is four by nine. It's four by nine aspect ratio for the outer display. Comes in at 1080 by 2092. Nice, nice, nice. You see, I've got, I've got help. I've got help to carry me through today. The display is excellent. The display experience is on point. Really, really loving it. Um, no slowdowns when it comes to how the 120 hertz works. Um, I've turned off the adaptive brightness just so that we can um, modulate and look at that. Uh, doesn't really have a high PWM in that sense. We've got to get the brightness up there. Um, and obviously I've turned off the adaptive brightness. Um, one thing I do love, obviously we've got dark mode, but you know, for this it's easier on the camera without dark mode. The smooth display comes out of the box, which is great. We love to see it. Smooth display 120 hertz out and smooth display 120 hertz in as well. This display has been excellent. Like I showed you with the video experience there, it's been, it's just been, it's just been top tier. It's just been top tier. So let's look at some of the display experience here. We're gonna go um, back and get to the channel. So we dropped some video with shots, so they're really, really happy with how that came out. So definitely go show support on that. We've got the camera comparison, we've got the unboxing. Um, let's look at the unboxing, for example, here, right? We're gonna turn it up to 2160p 4K. Bring it here. We've got full screen. So that's kind of like the look of the display for the inner display. Yes, people, what is good? Ben from Number Tech. Special unboxing the Google Pixel Fold. Oh my goodness! Yeah, they really went all out with this present. So that's an inner cover display right there. I'm feeling this. I'm definitely, definitely, definitely. So if we switch this. it around, you see that yeah, rotates the here. So you can see the two sides that we're looking at for the display. Ooh. Yo, Google, you didn't play. So we got it here. Straight. To it. Oh my goodness. We're going to close it and activate the cover Finally display. Here. This is. So again, transition takes a bit longer than I would like, in my opinion, but it does transition through. 
So that's the cover display right here. And the one thing to consider with the cover display is, at a 90 degree angle, it's when it activates to the inner display. Anything slightly before then, right? That's the retail box. I'm gonna switch the camera free. Right? Anything before. 256 gig obsidian. Matte finish, thank you Google. So if you can see it here. So as soon as you get to a 90 degree angle, that's when it will switch. So just before, it was like 88, 89, then once you get there, it just switches. So once you get to a full 90 degree angle like this, so that's when it will switch to the inner display. So that's actually a good range when it comes to how the outer display communicates. And it gives you some instructions there to look at as well, foldable screen care. All right, we're going to switch to the top down. Screens are softer than traditional screens, so avoid contact with sand, scrubs, fingernails, and sharp objects. Do not remove the pre applied screen protector as. So, in light of that, what we're going to do is a display measurement test. And obviously, the ones that have been here know I've got my display brightness measurement tool. So, we're going to turn it on and we're going to see what kind of brightness level we get when it comes to standard and HDR content, right? Let me just switch on my video broadcast and make sure that there's no background noise. Um, please do let me know if you can hear me. Please let me know if you can hear me. Um, okay, we're gonna look at 4K brightness. this one right here. I'm going to turn it up. I'm going to turn the light on so you guys can see. No problem. We're going top down right. HDR. I've uh, got display on max brightness with no auto mode. I'm gonna wait for the display window to get bigger. We're gonna do the same test for the inner display afterwards as well and see what display brightness reading. I see Trenton in there, what's good bro? What's good, thank you for joining. We're just on the display section of the live hands-on review of the pixel fold. Okay, so here we are. Okay. All right. All right, so what I'm getting in terms of a reading for the outer cover display with the maximum peak brightness in HDR at 4K with auto brightness off is 730 nits, right? So we're gonna go back and we're gonna turn on the adaptive brightness and see if that helps in any way, which it should, because it should auto recognize HDR. So it's, it's completely blown out, but um, we're gonna turn on the adaptive brightness So we got four, 730 nits for the outer display. <laughs> I'm just checking to make sure that we're on 2160p. Yes, we are. Apologies is blown out, but. Uh... Measuring.
49.9%. Going with this, okay, full screen coverage. Okay, so not much higher, 734 nits peak brightness for the outer cover display. So just putting that out there. So around 730 nits peak brightness. We're gonna open up the inner cover display. Open it up. Just make sure that we're on 2160p. Yep, 2160p, HDR, we're going to brightness level it, let's see what kind of brightness level we get with the outer display, okay, we're going to on hold, measure that as well, So we've got about just about 800 nits with this one. All right, so just measuring it to see that we're getting around the 800 nits. And there's one more brightness level to boost up to. All right, so we're getting around easy computers <laughs> so we're getting around for the inner display peak brightness around 774 nits as well again this is a live measurement this is how we do it this is what we're pretty much getting in terms of the display peak brightness delta so that's the display experience when it comes to what we're working with right let's turn that down not blind everyone and we can see what's good right the display experience has been great. The inner display ultra thin glass UTG has felt really good. My only thing about the display is that a mix of the hinge, the flex, the flex hinge is very, very strong where you cannot open it with one hand, right? Because of the zero gap hinge, you have to open it with two hands. I don't see that as an issue. That's a non-issue. Anyone that's complaining about the fact that you got to open this with two hands, Bro, welcome to the fold life. It's just how it is, right? The only thing is, it doesn't entirely open all the way out. You see it? It's 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 about a degree or two off every time. You you do have to, you know, tug it in a bit for it to be now what looks to be straight. But when you open it, you know, it is it it's it doesn't open outright straight. Let me just turn off the adaptive display settings, apologies. Just so it's easy to just maintain a consistent brightness level. Right here, perfect. Right? That's my only thing that gets me a little bit worried. I know we've seen what's happened to this with Jerry Rig everything, that's an extreme situation. But even without that being an extreme situation, I am a bit worried that that's literally the case. I know that's been done to kind of minimize the, the crease, the obviousness of the crease, which is a lot less obvious, it's still there, right? But it's a lot le less obvious in that sense. But what, what one thing I'm very pleased about when it comes to the inner display experience is the bezels. They've not bothered me personally. But, but, but I do understand that when you get used to that all screen in display, front-facing UDC camera experience of the Fold 4 and the Fold 3, you do feel it where this does feel like Fold 1 territory, but I don't think it's exactly like Fold 1. I think it's a great balance in place, right? 
I still do wish, again, we'll get to the camera, that this was the same 9.5 megapixel camera on the outer display where it does shoot 4K60, but it's a much more capable front-facing camera that can be used for your conference calls and stuff. Sometimes I do wish certain manufacturers would be brave enough to also put a camera here so that when you're having your conference calls, you, know, you can have a camera here and look direct, but you know what? Like this is a high quality camera. I think it auto frames and adjusts really well. Overall, what's missing? Of course, there's no apps, there's, there's no stylus experience like what you get with the Fold. It does support, you can use obviously a normal stylus in a sense that has the same capacitive touch as your fingers and whatnot. But the S Pen experience, although bespoke and dedicated to the Fold, that's something that's missing here. It makes a lot more sense. But again, Samsung are still not in a place where it's embedded into the phone like you have the S22 Ultra and the S23 Ultra and the Note 20 of old. Apart from that, the display experience has been fantastic in my opinion, right? It's been really, really good. It's been solid. I've not had any problems. And of course, the outer display is just absolute king. And of course, what's great is you do have a capacitive fingerprint sensor that is built into the power button as well. I do wish Google did it a different way with the power buttons, maybe based on my muscle memory. I'm not used to the fact that the power button's at the top and the volume is at the bottom. And it's a rocker, not as individual buttons. And disagree with me or not, the power button and the volume rocker don't feel that different enough. I know there's there looks to be a texturing difference, but to me, it doesn't feel different enough. It doesn't feel different enough. <laughs> so that's the display experience. You've seen it with us playing back some videos. We've done measurements of the brightness levels and stuff. You've seen how the display experience is with the outer display and the inner cover display. My concerns, what I love, what I'm not so sure of in, in a sense, right? What's in the settings and what comes out of the box. That is the display experience of the Pixel Fold. Okay, let's jump into the comments and see what's good with everyone. Really, really appreciate everyone showing out. It means the world. We've got 47 concurrent viewers. I'm gonna go back into the chats and then we are going to get onto the specs and the performance and really get down with the experience there. Hope you are enjoying your special edition Tech and Chill show unplugged of the live hands-on review, five days later, of the Google Pixel Fold, Google's first Fold device. And boy, I'm loving it so far. But expect the review this week, or the week after, because I'm at Goodwood Festival, but there is a conflict with this phone that, you know, you, you, you guys will get the conclusion here with me as well. Um, hey bro, do you think Apple comes out with a foldable, it will beat Google also? Just curious what you think about the Vision Pro. We won't talk about the Vision Pro, this ain't the live stream for it, but if we're gonna be talking about foldables, I think Apple does have a strong advantage because everything they've done with their tablet form factor, with the iPad mini and their iPads, having better app support, especially on a third party market, which we're gonna get onto the software experience and you're gonna see what I'm talking about. Apple will have a much bigger advantage when it comes to the inner display experience with third party apps working better. Um, so I hate to admit this, but I think if Apple come into foldables, it's almost like I'm about to steal your lunch type of territory stuff, right? So just watch out for that. We know the Fold 5 is going to be the slim style, but what about the Fold 6? Hopefully they'll get it right. They need to get it right. They need to get it right. Like the, 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 the reason Samsung had for the gap was to support the IPX8 protection. Yeah, I mean, Google have proven that you can have a zero gap and have an IPX8 protection, so Samsung, you need to come correct. What I personally think Samsung needs to do is for the, hmm? no, that's cool. Thank you. Hmm. Sorry, I had to get some more in the system. What I think Samsung need to do is follow the same trend of what they did with the S series device, as well as the tablet series device. Have an ultra, have a plus, have a normal size, right? Matt, if you can pass me the Honor Magic VS there. Yep. 
to give perspective what I'm talking about, I'm going to bring the three foldables available here in the UK. We've got the Unimagic VS right here. I'm going to switch to the top, right? So you're seeing the different form factors and what we're working with. I think Samsung need to go with something like this, having an Excel short standard. They need to work three foldable form factors for it to make sense, in my opinion. But to, to, to back what you're saying, Mike, personally, 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 yes, 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 yes. They do need to get that right for the Fold 6. They do need to get that right for the Fold 6. Google have really knocked it in and knocked it out. Right. I see someone dropped a super chat. I want to acknowledge that from the jump straight away. Super, super C O O N. <laughs> Will the Pixel Fold be your new daily driver for the time being? Absolutely. I have switched from the Z Fold 4 to the Pixel Fold. You know that for all the phones that I run, where I've got my two SIMs, my personal, my business line, the Fold 4 has stayed strong, but this time, I've switched to the Pixel Fold away from the Fold 4. I know the Fold 5 is around the corner, but the Pixel Fold, and I'm gonna get straight into it afterwards when we get to the software, has no reason to be my, fo my favorite foldable device outright. I feel guilty this being my favorite foldable device. And that's, that's because it's, again, it's not all Guns N' Roses. It's been Guns N' Roses so far, but it's not all Guns N' Roses, right? It's not all Guns N' Roses. So, it puts things in perspective, but I appreciate the $5 super chat. It means a lot. Really, really appreciate the direct donation. Yes, Trenton was good. I'm just gonna scan through the comments quickly so that we can get straight to it. Hey, can you go over the camera settings and features like Magic Eraser? Yeah, we'll get to the cameras and we've got a camera comparison that we can look at as well. So Charles, that's true, but it's not a contest why to display what people want something. Yeah, Ben got the tools tools. Yeah, yeah, we're stacked in, we're stacked in, we're stacked in. Brightness doesn't cut it for outdoor social. Yeah, at that nits you do need to be over a thousand. That is true, I agree. I do agree. I do agree, absolutely do agree. Yes, let's go. Appreciate you being here, Gonzalez. 10 to four. I'm in San Antonio, Texas. Appreciate you guys being here. Love to see it. Appreciate you being here. What's your love and hate? Um, we've pretty much been going through it. What's good, Dwayne? What's good, what's good? Hey, yo, what's good, what's good, what's good? Mike, what's popping? Yep, yep, yep. Screen out is 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 average. Yep, when it's below a thousand, that is true. Again, you saw the measurement here, so you can see it for yourself. Uh, Fold five announcement twenty six. Of course, it said come to the flip side. Samsung needs to keep the Z series design. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, cool. <laughs> We're running it back. Mm. Running it back, we're running it back, we're running it back. We're running it back. Sorry. Not feeling well, so I've got to make sure that I stay hydrated. What we're going to be talking about next is the performance, right? Specs and performance. Uh, let's go and download a CPU-Z so we can kind of have a visual look at what we're looking at right now. Well, we just downloaded CPU-Z. We're going to open this. And here, as you can see, is the Tensor G2. Right, you can see how it's architecturally broken down into an octa-core based design with eight cores the two strong cores, which is the Cortex-A78, which boosts up to 2.35 gigahertz. And obviously you've got the two Cortex-X1, which is boosted up to 2.85 gigahertz. And then obviously you've got the four efficient cores as well. It's based on a five nanometer process again. Um, I do wish this had the G3 and you know, anyway, this is what we're working with. We'll go to device. 
Again, you're seeing the outer, outer cover display um, resolution and stuff right there, system. Please don't show any ads just yet. <laughs> CPUZ does this. Uh, ah, failed. Failed. Skip, skip. System. Sensors, battery, right? System right there, device. So you can see in terms of what's available in terms of RAM, 12 gigabytes. And I do have the 256 gigabyte model here as well. Tensor G2, we're very, very well known and familiar with the Tensor G2. And I do love Google's take on computational photography computational smartphone experience and stuff, especially when it comes to things like, you know, the software experience of the live captioning that you can see. I love all of that. I, I just think Tensor's biggest downfall is outright efficiency. I hate to say this, Tensor's just not efficient. Tensor's is not efficient, especially when it comes to heat management. I've not had any overheating problems I've not had any overheating issues, but I like to I like to also put things in perspective that Tensor's not, I just think the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 mobile platform built for Galaxy, especially in the S23 series, has really, really put things in perspective and really, really spot me. I just think in them not doing a die shrink from the Tensor G1 and still being on a five nanometer process hasn't helped them, in my opinion. And you know, the Pixel Fold handles it really well. I've not noticed any jitters or any slowdowns, right? But for all intensive purposes, we've got Asphalt 9, so we're gonna play that. Just to give you an idea of the performance, we're on about 32% battery right now. Um, when did I charge it to 100%? Anyone that checked on the Instagram stories, when did I do the charging test? Yeah, so it's been 100%. I think it's been 100% from, technically that would be Sunday, 10 p.m. UK time. And let's not even get to how long it takes to charge. We're gonna talk about that as well, right? We're gonna launch Asphalt for the meantime. Continue with current. Uh, let's see, I don't know where the power button is. I'm gonna play. Next. Play. Hope you can see. This is a live gameplay demonstration of the performance of the Tensor G2. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> My asphalt skills are not the one at all, as you can see. See the slight frame drops that I notice as well. So you can see the full screen experience is really nice when gaming on this, right? But there are, it's, it's very, 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 very minor. It's not something that you easily notice. And in terms of the temperature, we've not been gaming for long. It is a little bit warm to the touch, but it's nothing serious, I would say. 
just turn this volume down. I don't want no, no copyright issues. <laughs> it's it's the, the curse of game settings, controls. Uh, so tilt this there, no, touch the drive. Yeah, touch the drive. We'll go to touch the drive. Happy with that. That's okay. All right, we're gonna play some more. So let's go here. Let's go to Dam and Again, gonna play. Change the controls from tilt. Again, this is a live gameplay demonstration. You can see, you know, effectively how it is with the Tensor G two. Okay, so we're gonna swipe, boost, double tap to spin. Oh, breakout, 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 Merkage, boost, 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 spin, turbo, nitros. we go turn it around so it games it games really well i can just feel it a little bit i can feel the warmth and the temperature increase a little bit more than i would be used to right okay so it's on 30 percent so we're going to just close this come out and see the performance of the tensor g2 isn't really an issue as such my concern is just efficiency. It is warm to the touch. It is warm to the touch. My issue is efficiency, battery standby time, and also um, what you call it, heat management, right? Appreciate you fresh. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna retweet, retweet, appreciate you, bro. Thank you for that. But the overall performance has been really, really consistent, really, really stable. So it's not really been an issue in that retrospect, right? I just think, I know, I know, I know Google are trying to do their own thing with the Apple approach to their own silicon. <sighs> I just think a device at this price point, I get, I get there's the different crossovers and there's always the numbered series pixel devices that are meant to get the new chipset and whatnot. But I almost, I almost do feel like this should have been a Tensor G3 on a four nanometer process. We don't know much details about the Tensor G3 and what that's gonna be. But that's just me personally. That's just me personally. That's just me personally, right? So take that for whatever it is. The performance is, is more than adequate. Of, of course, you've got 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage. It's not really the performance. I just think the outright efficiency is something that I am not too 100% confident when it comes to Pixel for the Tensor G2. But overall, that's been my performance experience, specs and performance, Tensor G2, 12 gigs around, 256 gigs storage, Pixel Fold. Jump back into all cameras. Go into the chat. See what's good with everybody. We've got 50 concurrent viewers. Really, really appreciate everyone showing up. It means the world. Absolutely means the world. So I feel you fresh. I'm gonna wait for the next iteration. We've just hit the one hour mark as well. I would expect Samsung, Samsung to do something like the Mate X3. Samsung needs to keep the Z series. Yep. What's good or hope you had the pixel for um I've had my Pixel 4 for 10 days now, love it. Kicked the Pixel 7 Pro out of the bucket. Nice, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Kane. Nice one. 
fold five is 26, it's gonna be the same form factor, apparently, we don't know, so the 26. Samsung S Flex G, uh, that's from Samsung Display. Uh, can't wait for mine this week, awesome, awesome. Got mine on the 18th, it's been so, it's been, it's been going, um, we got mine on the 18th and it's been going by so slow. Oh, okay. Interesting. What do you mean by that in that sense? It seems to be doing well thus far. What do you think? Uh, who do you think you are, Paul Walker? <laughs> nah, I'm not, man. My, my, my mobile gaming on Asphalt is rubbish. I play Red Bull Racing 3 nights. Man, I wish Google would have launched a fold with the Tensor G3. Absolutely fresh. That's the money. That's the content. That, that, that's coming right there. It's, I think it will be unfair to say the performance of the Tensor G1, right, is bad. So Tensor G2 is bad. It will, be, it will be unfair to say that. But it wouldn't also be unfair to say that at the price, I think it deserves to have the best from Google, especially when it comes to the efficiency side of things. Two years running on a five nanometer process. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Not for the performance, but for longevity. I think the longevity for the efficiency is the one I really, really feel the most. I really feel the most. And I think, I think I'm think i starting to feel that in that retrospect. Yeah, I agree. It would be soon. Google doesn't get the Tensor G, um, G3 ready. Thank you, eSIM Studios. I love your channel. Really appreciate your support. Thank you. Um, video started with the, um, with the Fold at 37% battery, now 30%. That was with the gaming. I think it would have been much better holding off the fold um, until the G3 was ready. And I, I don't, I, I, a part of me wants to forgive Google, but I'm on, I'm on the same mindset where every time I kept using it, very, 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 very odd hiccups. So you can see from the outer display to the inner display, some of the transitions can be a bit janky. I don't know if you've experienced that as well, Fresh, but in my unboxing, you saw it transitioning from the outer to the inner display in some moments and even in this live stream it's nowhere near as instantaneous as you would expect it to be right it's nowhere near as instantaneous as you expect it to be and you could put it down to software optimization but i think some of it does come down to the tensor g2 i wish they waited uh, that's where things start to get conflicting with me when it comes to the pixel fold yeah that's when things start to get conflicting when it comes to the Pixel Fold. All right, so we've talked about the performance, right? Let's talk about the camera. We've got the camera, we're gonna be talking about the software, rounding up with the battery experience, and then pretty much giving our two cents on our thoughts. And I think when it comes to this side, it is gonna be a bit of a comparison against the direct establishment, which is the Galaxy Fold 4, right? The Fold 4 is gonna be the direct comparison that we're gonna be talking about, right? Then we're gonna be looking at the camera experience when it comes to that as well. So we're gonna to switch to that, right? I'm gonna go into studio mode, gonna open up the browser and also move over to the Chrome tab right here. Okay, so I'm gonna transition over. And you're gonna see that in terms of the content, we've been pretty much cooking up. And we did an all-nighter, uh, all day. Uh, you've been following on stories, you'll be seeing it. All right, I'm gonna open this up. Reduce the volume. And we're gonna go full screen on this one. Right. <coughs> and see, this is what we're working with, the Pixel Fold. And if you ain't seen any of my Ultimate Camera Comparison series, man, definitely go watch it, go watch that video. I'll have it linked in the description below. I'll put it in the cards above for the replay crew as well. Definitely go on the channel, go to the videos tab and watch it, Pixel Fold versus the Z Fold 4 when it comes to videos, um, photos, daylight, low light, and all of that stuff, right? So we're gonna fast forward it here. And you're seeing it for yourself, the camera comparison that we did, right? Both are very comparable, but there's, a, there's just a few takes from what we look at it and what we're looking at right now. Outer cover display selfies. Both are comparable when it comes to video shooting modes. They can shoot up to 4K 60, right? The 
Z Fold 4 does have a wider field of view at the same distance when you're holding it, right? Um, it does have one advantage though. It does shoot video portrait mode. I personally don't think Google Cinematic Video Blur was that great. I think it was a tack job and it wasn't something that really took care to add it, right? One, it was limited to just the main sensor at the back. Two, it wasn't available on a selfie. Three, you couldn't adjust the blur before you could shoot. And it was only limited to 24 frames a second. It was limited to 1080p and it also doesn't shoot in 4K, right? So you can see the difference here. This is one of the first advantages that you get with the Samsung. You do get the video portrait mode on the selfie camera, you do get the video portrait mode on a 1X camera, you do get the video portrait mode on a 3X zoom as well. Now, one of the things I love about the Pixel Fold is that they carried on with the same energy of what you found with the Pixel 7 Pro. One of only few cameras that allows you to switch lenses in 4K60 while you're recording on the same clip. In fact, the, the Z Fold 4 doesn't even allow you to record in 4K60 on the ultra wide. It doesn't, it's got that limitation. The ultra wide is only limited to 4K30. You've got 4K60 on here. And you can see that the lens transitions are much smoother. The only advantage that you really do have with the um, Z Fold 4 is that it does have a much more flexible camera, especially in 4K30. It's one of only few cameras that allows you to switch to the selfie and back to the rear cameras all in the same clip without stopping recording, right? So we're gonna move over to some of the photos and we're doing a photo analysis. So this is some of the landscape. I think out of the box, the Z Fold 4 does look, if we're looking at the landscape images without me in the subject, it does have a wider field of view on the ultra wide. The ultra wide on the Pixel Fold isn't as ultra wide as what you have on the Pixel 7 Pro, but the Pixel does have a much more detailed image, a much more natural looking image, better HDR, better control, I do like that. The detail does balance out when you go to the main sensor, 48 versus 50 megapixel with pixel binning, right? So it's really good in that retrospect. Um, in terms of zoom capabilities, the pixel whoops the Z Fold 4. Whatever Google are doing with their super res zoom technology, it's fantastic. And of course you do have a 5X periscope zoom, which is brilliant. So pretty much on the same smoke as what you get with the Pixel 7 Pro, which I'd love to see, right? So you can see in terms of the image processing with the super res zoom, 5X dedicated, 5X digital, 3X dedicated, 2, 2 3X digital, it really, really works well. And when you don't go into the extended zoom, yes, the Fold 4 can go all the way up to, um, the Fold 4 can go all the way up to 30X zoom, but even at 30x zoom and a 20x zoom, you can see it, the pixel just looks so much cleaner, right? If we pause and frame it here, the pixel just looks so much better. Google Super Res Zoom Tech is just class A1, right? Let's move over. Only thing that's missing as well is there's no macro features. If we go to selfie, it's it's an interesting one. It's an interesting one. The pixel, the pixels do a great job when it comes to the selfie, right? But I think the whole process. One thing that really conflicts me about the camera experience on Google right now is portrait mode. The portrait mode, it still behaves like the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL days. It doesn't show you in real time, right? We're gonna do a demonstration that shows the difference between the Fold 4 as well as obviously the Pixel Fold. We're gonna use the camera free to show that difference, right? If I come out of this and show you where my conflict is with the Pixel Fold, when it comes to, let me come out of studio mode, right? So you're gonna see something right here. So I'm gonna open this, go to portrait mode. You see in the portrait mode experience here, right? It shows me in real time. Let's just say I move too far away Right, it'll say find a face, it communicates with me. It says find a face. And then when it gets ready, I can change the blur intensity. I can change the blur type, right? I can change the blur type. I can do a lot of things. It communicates with me in real time for me to see what my background blur effect is looking like. But with the Pixel, it's still, it's still stuck in the days of the Pixel 2, right? The very cropped field of view, 
I can't see the background blur in real time. I just have to take it and trust that it works. And I'm gonna show you some examples of where this doesn't work, <laughs> right? This doesn't work. I'm gonna to go to photos. Um, which shots are portrait mode? I think these. So let me give you an example here. If you see, okay, this says portrait mode. This is with the rear camera. It says portrait mode, but it hasn't applied the blur. It basically hasn't applied the blur. Right? This is the issue with the pixel. It says it's a portrait picture, but it took several tries for it to activate. And that was in a 2X mode. So this is, this is the unfortunate experience of the capturing experience in portrait mode where I've not really enjoyed, and I don't enjoy in pixels anymore. I don't think the experience of portrait pictures on pixels do it anymore. I think it's way behind the competition. Google needs to start implementing a real time preview and allowing you to have more granular control before you actually snap the shot, right? So I'm heavily conflicted when it comes to the camera experience when capturing portraits on the pixel. We're gonna go full screen again. And we're gonna pretty much look at that, right? Everything else though, does a great job. I do like it, right? But there are some few things obviously missing. It's not as ultra wide as ultra wide. It does perform well in night mode as well. Um, it does have the ability to shoot obviously nighttime portrait mode when it comes to the rear cameras. Um, night mode on the ultra wide makes a huge difference as well. Um, and I do like the flexibility in 4K60, but I highly recommend, it's about 15, 16 minutes, definitely get your popcorn, sit down, go relax, go watch it, go enjoy the camera comparison, show support and love for there. Makes a huge, huge, huge difference. And let's look at the camera itself. Let's go through the camera UI itself, right? We're gonna go top down. This is the outer cover display. So we're gonna change it from the top down. You've got a 1X, 1.4X camera. Portrait mode um, does crop in a bit more than the standard. And there's a 1.2X there, which the defaults to. Obviously you've got your long exposure settings there, which you can use. You've got your night sight, which you can obviously change the exposure time with the slider, just like what you've got with the Pixel Fold, uh, Pixel 7 Pro. Um, another thing that's obviously great is that you do have the extended zoom ranges with the haptic feedback, which is great. We'd we'll love to see it. Um, and then for the cover display, we do have 1080p, 4K60. 4K60 doesn't have the speech enhancement, but 4K30 does which is great to see, just like the Pixel 7 Pro, but it does shoot 4K60, which is very comparable, which we love to see. Right, and we've got the different modes as well. Very simple and Pixel Stock X as we do, right? We'll go to the rear camera. Now for the love about Pixel, this is a 0.6X, not a 0.5X like you have the Pixel 7 Pro. It stays within the same focal length, right, when you switch. And if you go to the camera here, same thing. HDR as well which is in 10-bit, but only up to 30 frames, not 60 FPS. You can have the direct control of the HDR right there as well, which is great to see. Speech enhancement is on, flash, no flash. Go into more settings, save location, gestures. You've got the advanced ones here as well, daily lens warning, um, H.265 um, compression as well. Enable time-lapse for astrophotography. When that is active, of course, that's on a tripod. Frame hints, adjust white balance. Um, full camera resolution, less storage or medium. Um, selfie is previewed, video stabilization that's on, audio zoom as well, so it matches the zoom. And then obviously the benefit of a foldable is the ability to shoot with the outer cover display of a selfie. And that you press here, and it says unfold phone for high resolution. You unfold it, right? And you can see that that's where your ultra wide is. It's your 1X right here. And you got your 5X, bruh. 
well, because of the lighting condition is cropping in on the main sensor, it's not actually moving to the dedicated telephoto. It'd be like that, very deceptive, right? But you can get the high resolution selfies. You can hold your hand out. Oh, doesn't do that. It can do that for portrait mode as well. And I'm gonna show you a nice little neat trick. I showed it for the Fold 4 as well, but you can pretty much use the outer cover display and the rear cameras as your main live stream camera for TikTok as well as Instagram. So you go here, all right? You can see that you're on the main camera. You can go live. This is a hack once you go into the cover display and then you can pretty much go live, <laughs> right? You can fold it a little bit. You can pinch, you go to ultra wide. And you can pretty much go live. Let's see, camera four. All right? A nice little trick right there. <laughs> Normal. You can have a selfie display, and you can use the rear cameras for your main high resolution live streams as well. Close it. Right, let's go into the camera settings and let's see if we've got some pictures in there in which we can remove some stuff in the background and go through some of the features like the magic eraser and see how that works. All right, what have we got? 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 Okay, I'm going to open this, right? And of course, we're going to go to edit. And we're going to see what suggestions are throws up. So obviously you can add portrait if you want to, tools, right? You've got the unblur, if it was out of focus, portrait blur, you've got sky, magic eraser. Next, next. Let's see how magic eraser works. It's pretty much what you know and love, right? Camouflage. So let's just erase this, for example, the tree. See how it does it. I might struggle, or might have to just erase the one over there. All right, it's 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 done something. <laughs> it's done something. Let's open it up to see. So that's quite a tough one to do because there's a mix of foliage. We're gonna go back, right? And we're gonna rub this one here, and let's see if it manages that. It's quite a difficult one to do, but maybe the benches at the back might be easier. So let's do that. Yep, the benches are a lot easier. So there's one bench that's gone. So if we go back and we go forward, right? So everything we know and love about Magic Eraser is there. We can remove the bench. Maybe there's people sitting there that you don't want there, so you can remove out. And we're going to press done. So this is Magic Eraser at work. Obviously the unblur feature, this is in focus, so there isn't gonna be much to unblur. But again, if there's a blurred image with someone's face, it can work some wonders there. Portrait blur, let's see if it applies to portrait blur. Just showing you some of the settings and the stuff, right? So you can apply a portrait blur. You can change the depth as well, make it thinner. So that's interesting. Probably the most reliable way to add portrait mode, take a normal picture and add it. Let's look at the sky. Radiant, so we can change the sky, afterglow, which is interesting. Love to see it. And then obviously we've got color focus as well, right? Slight gap missing there. We've got adjust, filters, markup, suggestions, right? That we can enhance, dynamic pop, vivid, cancel, discard. So those are my thoughts on the camera experience of the Pixel Fold. I definitely, definitely, definitely highly recommend you sit down and watch the camera comparison, going through some of the settings, going through some of your favorite features when it comes to the Pixel Fold, when it comes to the camera experience, the limitations and some of the things that does well and doesn't do so well. 
but definitely watch the full camera comparison. Sit down, get your popcorn, get your meal, sit down, relax, enjoy it. It's a really, really good experience when it comes to that. But that's the camera experience right there, 48 megapixel main, 10.8 megapixel um, ultra wide, 10.8 megapixel zoom, a 9.5 megapixel um, outer cover display selfie that shoots 4K 60 up to, and an eight megapixel inner display camera, which is great in the sense that yes, it is limited to 1080p. I wish it was 9.5 in um, 9.5 megapixels and had the ability to shoot 4K as well, even if it was up to 30 frames a second. But what's nice is compared to the Fold 4, this does allow you to shoot, although it's just 1080p 30, uh, sorry, let me just flip it. Although it's just 1080p 30, right, it does have speech enhancement. And I love the fact that you can still shoot portrait mode on the inner display camera as well, which you cannot do on the um, on a Samsung one because it's using an under display camera, processing is a lot harder, and it's only four megapixels compared to eight. That's the camera experience with the Pixel Fold right about now. Ooh, struggling, man. Let's put this down, get back into the comments. Switch all cameras. <coughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, we're back in. I've had the same issue with the screen transitions. You know it. You know it. <laughs> Not quick run. <laughs> oh, quick run, man. Quick run. The greens on the Pixel Passport change. Z Fold 4 stayed consistent. Yep. Z Fold 4, Z Fold 3 has the same portrait, um, the same portrait features, absolutely. Softer updates may help with efficiency. Pixel phones get better with time. I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. I don't think so. I just call it as it is. I don't think software updates are going to help with that. Quick run. You know it. <laughs> Quick run squad. Shout out to the camera comparison. Quick run squad. You know how we do. Um, I need them to remove the auto frame rate option and just put 24 frames a second. Absolutely. Give us the option to highlight that and select 24 FPS. Definitely. I agree. Welcome. How does the Pixel Fold's camera compare to the Huawei's foldable? I've, I've never used any of Huawei's foldables. I can't, I can't answer that question for you. I'm going to be doing a follow-up comparison, doing a three-way one against the Honor Magic VS that I have here with the Fold 5 when it comes back. We'll double back. Um, does it feel heavy in your pocket? No, it doesn't. Are you going to put a case or skin on it? I do have a case from Caseology, but, you know, raw. <laughs> we like to raw dog it, man. Raw dog it. Thanks, man. Thank you. We like to raw dog it. We've got 48 concurrent viewers here. Really, really appreciate the lookout, man. You guys are really, really being the stars of the show, supporting. We've been through four sections. We've talked about the design. We've talked about the display experience. We've talked about the performance. And we've also then talked about the camera experience. We have an in-depth camera comparison that's there. We're going to be shifting to software. This is where the pain of using the Pixel Fold really, really comes in, right? Getting straight to it. This is where I feel guilty that this is so far my favorite foldable experience. I feel guilty because it really doesn't have a right to you. And this is where I think the software is too vanilla. And I've only really realized it that the difference between Google and Samsung is Google generally is trying to be too elegant, but Samsung is brute force with elegance. Let me explain. Everything about the software experience really favors the outer display more than the inner display. And I think for foldable, that's a very, very inaccurate balance to go for. Some may agree that maybe the balance is correct, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm gonna pull out the Fold 5, and we're gonna go through Fold 4. <laughs> I'm gonna pull out the Fold 4, and we're gonna go through and compare some of the stuff that you see. Clearly, 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 when it comes to the outer cover display, right, we've established it for subjective and objective reasons, the Pixel Fold is better, right? This candy bar remote form factor, I've never gotten used to it. I'll never get used to it. It's an annoyance and it gets on my nerves. But when it comes to the outer cover display, 
everything about what you love on your smartphone is fine, right? But we'll move into here. Unlike with the Samsung where you've got the option to have a completely different home screen or you can match it how you want, you can't do that. You don't have that option on the Pixel 4. Whatever's on the outside matches on the inside. And I get it, it's actually not that much of a big issue for me personally, right? But I can understand the frustration of not having that option, right? That's also another issue with it being too vanilla. But the biggest one is the software. The third party support is such a hit and miss. It's such a hit and miss. Look at this. This isn't a great experience. I don't care what anyone says. These black bars, shout out to you, Gina, gonna retweet. These black bars, this ain't it, fam. Sorry, but this ain't it. Let's compare it to the Fold 4. Open it up. Twitter. It's a full screen experience, right? I'm gonna turn it um, off. It's a full screen experience. Yeah, this, this ain't it fam. This ain't it, I'm, I'm so conflicted by this. Obviously TikTok is, I'm gonna skip ad. Yeah, TikTok ain't even optimized. TikTok ain't even optimized. I thought TikTok was optimized, but it's not. Amazon Prime Day is here. I'm gonna skip. So this is the difference, right? TikTok isn't optimized. Uh, shout out to the homie Craig Mitch. I'm gonna come here. This. Like, yo, this ain't it, fam. I I'm sorry. <sighs> this just ain't it. Amazon Prime Video. Okay, Amazon is slightly, slightly better optimized. Slightly better optimized. This feels incomplete. I hate to call this out. But the third party support is very, very, very lackluster. And I'm, I'm, left, I'm left conflicted for different reasons. Let's do another test of multitasking, right? We've got YouTube. Again, I think the YouTube experience is fine. I think the YouTube experience, you know, makes a lot of sense in how it works. Again, I'm gonna go to my channel, cancel. Uh, just gonna go to so this the this part hurts me. This part hurts me. This part hurts me. It hurts having to go through this. So in terms of the proportion is different. I actually prefer how Google does it here in a way. There's no perfect. There's no. There's no perfect way to do this really. Samsung's one allows you a full screen at the top, partial here, but you can see your feed, but you have to go down there to be able to see your feed. So I think each have their strengths, right? But here's the thing, if, if, if I'm gonna bring up another application, let's just bring up Instagram for example, I've got two. Right? I can have three apps running at the same time. I've only got two. My favorite thing about the software experience on the Fold was the ability to run more than two apps at the same time. Right, you ain't got a pop-up view. You can come out, you can do this, you can do that. I'll be very, very honest with you. 
I want to, I know people talk about the vanilla Android software experience in its current state, in my opinion, it just doesn't work. And I'm left conflicted. I'm left conflicted because everything about this form factor makes sense. But I, I, I fall into this trap of, what am I gonna be getting? Am I gonna be getting a, a black bar experience? Am I gonna be getting a full screen experience? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, Bing is full screen, great. Um, Facebook isn't. Instagram isn't. Twitter isn't. WhatsApp is. Netflix, I guess, is. No, it isn't. Uh, the software leaves me wanting. I'm just going to be very honest. Each to their own. When it's closed like this, I'm having a time of my life. But when I open it up, this is where I feel guilty that this is still my favorite foldable of the year so far. It has no right to be. This is the part with me where I appreciate the support I get from Team Pixel. They've looked after me since the Pixel 4a. I'm forever grateful. But I think they do appreciate us being honest like this because there has to be some form of honesty and transparency. This is not a paid promotion. Is it a gifted device? Absolutely. And I love the fact that Google owns it with chest and says, tag us, tell us Team Pixel, tell people that it's gift from Google. And I respect that. But, but do not get it twisted. Sometimes it's a bit hard where you're thinking, should I? Will I be off the list later? Hey, I'm gonna call it as it is. But I think if you do it within reason of respect and show it, right, I don't see no issue. The software experience, especially when it comes to the third party experience, leaves me wanting. And even natively, the lack of flexibility, it's, it's just too limited. I, I think the stock approach to this foldable form factor, which I really hope gets really tackled in Android 14, I don't think it's working for me, especially when it comes to the inner display. So the software experience leaves me conflicted because the favorite things that brought me to Foldable, I can't really do. And it does make me sad. It makes me feel conflicted because every single time between the Foldables I have, this is the one I wanna pick up and use the most because it just feels the best. It feels the best well built. It, it's, it's just the one I've been waiting for. Now I'm left conflicted of, I want everything that's on the Samsung software experience to come over here. Because I'm just not getting it. It's, it's, I, you've got to respect the hustle here, man. You've got to respect the hustle of how so far ahead the tablet and foldable experiences on Samsung devices where this, it does feel a little bit incomplete. And it makes me sad. And this is the part where I say it's not all guns and roses for the Pixel Fold experience. I've switched to it. But whenever it gets to the inner display software experience, unless I'm running two apps at the same time and not having the ability to run free, that black bar experience ain't it, fam. It ain't it. And I'm not here for it. That's just me personally. This isn't saying it to put anyone off. But there's an, un there's an element of honesty that you've got to come when you've been used to a certain fold experience from way back when, you know? That's me when it comes to the software experience. It is running the latest version of Android. It is on the latest security update for June. July should be coming soon. Section number five, software experience with the Pixel Fold. Let's get back into the comments, switch it up. Move to all cameras. We've just hit past the one and a half hour mark. Great. T.Y. Townsend said, I made it. Yes, appreciate you coming through. It says, why doesn't Samsung and Google use their money to pay off developers to develop the software for the foldable? I agree. I agree. It's a painful one. My guy made it. 
Got the team coming clutch with the valuable H2O. Yep. Yo, what's good? What's good, Savage Scientist? The app looks better when you change the phone's orientation. Yeah, it does, but it's it's just not there. Rotate the Pixel 4 for the better screen usage. It I get that, but what 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 I'm trying to get at is this. Why can't the foldable experience just be good from this angle? Right? Why can't it just be good from this angle? Like I get it, but even even here, even here, people. Sorry to say, but even here in this folded, rotated form, like what you're saying, is this still acceptable? I'm not. I'm not trying to not. I'm not trying to knock it, but I'm just trying to say, this isn't where we want to be. This isn't where we want to be. Yes, it is better in this form. It is, but this is still not where we want to be. I appreciate that it works. You've got the home screen rotation, which you, which you can, you know, pretty much do right there, right? But this isn't where we want to be. You can't ignore the differences in software. You, you just can't. The software has a long road ahead of it. It does. Google should be the main ones to have it down, yes. This is what this is what hurts about the software experience. This is why it's important for developers. This is going to be the first word will be for a lot of people. Simple software is fine. Simple software is fine. I don't have a problem with simple software, but I like you know let me use all the, all the screen. But this isn't simple software, respectively. The lack of optimization. Simple software and optimization are two different things. Mike, thank you. Mike, thank you. Right, optimization comes with time. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. What are you saying, my G? I'm here still. New users need time to learn. People keep saying the Pixel is the first generation foldable, so it should mean that they have time together with their foldables. It's a bare bones experience worth the price. This is where now it comes into play. Um, I agree. Do you like the Honor Magic VS more than the Fold 4? No, because the Honor Magic VS does not have a flex hinge, but it does have a better form factor. I do like the form factor better because of that wider outer display at 12 by 9 aspect ratio. Oh. Is there a force extend app in the Play Store? There shouldn't have to be. Even if there is, there shouldn't have to be. My point I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, to what point do we have to do workarounds? Even with workarounds, Samsung realized that the advanced labs feature is something they built into their software settings. But even then, I don't remember the last time I had to touch it. Out of the box, it just worked. It just worked. Hello, Mr. Lover of Tech Geezer. What's good, what's good, what's good? Do you like James Harden? What, well, okay, that's a bit of a weird question. Do you know Pete and Bass? No, I know of them, but I don't know them personally. You lot are funny. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below when it comes to the software. Do you think I'm being too harsh on Google? Do you think somehow I've missed the mark? Somehow I've, I'm okay to take some form of accountability if I've maybe expected too much, but we come back to it. £1,749 starting all the way up to £1,899. Matt, please double check the pricing for me. Mm. That's correct. I'll put you up on the yeah. Answer. It leaves me conflicted. And the last part of the conflict of the Pixel Fold experience is the whole battery experience. It's the whole battery experience okay. and... Mm -hmm. two, two digits gig is 1,749. Yep. 5 12 gig, gig is 1869. 1,869 pounds. <sighs> We're going to get to that in the conclusion of things, right? But you see, I'm left even more conflicted when it comes to the battery experience. I'm left even more conflicted when it comes to the battery experience. We're going to go to battery, right? We're going to go to battery usage. We've had good usage. We have had good usage this time around, right? So battery usage in itself hasn't really been a problem. We've had good usage.
go here. And we've got screen on time right now roughly on since full charge is five hours and 10 minutes since last charge. And obviously the last charge um, was 10 p.m. Sunday. So it's now technically Tuesday in the UK, almost at 2 a.m. So we've, we've had good, I mean, it's okay. It's, it's, it ain't, it ain't, it's in, in the, ugh. it's okay. A battery life is okay. Let me just say that. But what I will say is charging. I've, I, I wish I could have edited a small part of it. That charging test video is going to go live, if not tomorrow, Wednesday. What's tomorrow, Tuesday. If not tomorrow, Wednesday. It really just depends on, I've got a sponsorship video that I'm doing with JBR. That takes priority. We gotta eat, we need our monies. We gotta look after the team. Charging. If you thought the Pixel 7 Pro was slow, meet your new slow champion. I'll give you a preview, right? From dead zero, 1%, 2% with the official 30 watt Google charger. Find out what the wattage is. I think it's 18 watts, right? Or 20 watts official speed. But I used the official 30 watt Google charger, which I've got it plugged in right there. Cause I was quite worried. Fresh, what are you saying? I'm getting a message from Fresh incoming. Asking about charger if it's so. <laughs> Fresh says the phone ain't gonna make it through the rest of your live stream, <laughs> bro. It's 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 it, it, it's deep. It's deep. It's deep. It's deep. Interception. How, how much is what's it? Wattage. Thirty watt for the Google charger, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we use the thirty watt official charger from Google. But here's the thing. When I use the wattage meter, you'll see in the camera, you'll see in the charging test video, I'll put in a link below and the cards above once the video is live, but it's not live at the time of this live stream and recording. It was only really pulling about 16.9, 17 watts. It took two hours and 15 minutes to charge. Two, two hours and 15 minutes. Like the Fold 4 isn't fast, 25 watts, but that was about an hour 15, hour 20 two hours and 15 minutes, Google. Your overnight charging warriors are gonna come for me, no problem. You be the one person or the group of people that charges their phone overnight. But I promise you, it takes a few moments and few incidences where you need actual fast charging with no more than one hour to full charge, where when you don't have that, you will feel it. Charging on this Pixel is crimp, not, is criminally slow. It's been a pain point for me with pixels anyway, but this takes the cup. This takes the cup. Charging on this is, is, is it's, it's just not it. It's just not it. And the battery life is just about okay, but it docks when the charging is that extra criminally slow. Anyone that's going to be talking about battery health preservation, fine, cool. Nah. That's 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 literally been the battery experience. It's been it's been it's been okay in terms of screen on time and usage, and where it is right now, twenty three percent since being on full charge. When we did the charging test, which I'm going to edit it, put it out there, do voiceover, and do everything. But the charging, nah fam, <laughs> miss me with that, unfortunately. My benchmark for good charging experience is no more than one hour to full charge. If you can charge to full in 45 minutes, I'm happy. If you charge to full in 30 minutes, I'm spot. Any more than that is overkill. Those are the benchmarks, 30, 45 and one hour. Any more than an hour, you've really got to start justifying what the situation is. How much more over an hour is it? A minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. How is it acceptable to the pricing and what the device is? Two hours and 15 minutes, bruh? Nah.
That's been the battery life experience with the Pixel Fold. Let's jump back into the comments, see what's good with everyone. Ah, oh, dear, oh dear, oh dear. I'm going to pay, if I'm going to pay $1,800 for a folding phone, it needs to be more than just a wider version of a slab. I agree. It's a painful one. This is where it ain't guns and roses. This is where the conflict. Fold 4 versus S23 Ultra have a distinct difference in between them. I agree. Fair criticisms. Absolutely. Software does leave a lot to be desired. It does. It, it really does. I, I want to try and... Like Google, if you still ever want to sponsor me for a showcase video, I'm never going to say no, ever. I'm calling it straight. Like, hey, I love what you lot are doing. But in the objective way that we have to be with these devices, gifted or not, fam, yeah, software leaves a lot to be desired. Would you be more accepted of the flaws if it was cheaper? Absolutely. Not 100% accepting, but I'll be a bit more understanding. Yeah. Agree on the main screen software, no, no. Cover screen is fine. In the display software, yeah, leaves a lot on the table. You're not wrong. Can the software thing be patched? <sighs> Who knows? Too many compromises for me personally. I feel you, I feel you. This is why I'm saying, this is still my favorite foldable of the year, but I feel very, 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 very guilty to call this my favorite foldable. I'm almost I'm almost an imposter by the looks of it. Am I really a fold person if I'm gonna give it that many passes to still call it my favorite? I feel conflicted. That's the story of the Pixel Fold for me. The inner conflict. That's gonna be the title of the full review when I do it. The inner conflict of my experience with the Pixel Fold 2 two weeks later. Sad man. For $1,800, um, use everything should be working. Yeah, right out of the box, yeah. And I don't want to be spending my money to try one. I agree. I agree. Should Google have used the Tensor G3 instead of the two? Yes, what's good, Vibes? Thanks for coming through, Vibes. Hope you're well, hope you're safe. Dropping the flames. Um, this man is up late. Yeah, I do this for you lot, because you lot show up and show out. <laughs> it's started at 37, now it's at 21%, 23% by the looks of it. Yeah, updates will make this phone a true powerhouse and it will crush the, you're being very, very, very optimistic there. I don't know about crushing. I, mean, I just want to put it out there, man. That, that Fold 5 is going to come most likely with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 mobile platform built for Galaxy. Um, I don't know about crushing, mate. Um, crush, yeah, that's, that's kind of a reach. Yeah, crush, it's kind of a reach still, I'm not going to lie. I love Google, but yeesh. The thing I, um, that's the thing I miss the most about the um, Chinese phones, the charging speed. Yeah, it's no joke. Ha ha, you're funny. Um, wasn't a joke. <laughs> okay, damn. You lot, you lot are going too ham in there. I usually charge between 30 to 80%. Ain't worried about the charging speed. No problem. No problem. These phones that charge faster wirelessly than the Pixel does wired. Yeah. Yeah. Where are we now? Where are we now? Where are we now? Conclusion. Five days later with the Pixel Fold. Five days later with the Pixel Fold. Wow. It is so far my favorite foldable of the year so far. Right, there's more coming. We've got Honor Magic VS, we've got a Fold 4, we've got a Fold 5, and we've got probably another one coming from Honor. But I feel I feel odd, I feel utterly guilty. This is the first phone that I feel guilty calling it my own, calling it my favorite. It's 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 more flawed in the right places than it shouldn't. And that inner display software experience, especially with third party apps and even natively not allowing me to use more than one, two apps, not having pop-up view, not being able to scale it. These things matter. If you're a real fold user, you know the difference it makes when you have that experience. And that's what made me fall in love with the Fold 2, 3, and especially the 4 recently. I gave a story about this when I was in Berlin for my first EFA last year. I was looking for a kebab shop to get some food. I had 
Google Maps open, I had WhatsApp open to keep up with my messages, and I had a full screen, I had, I, had, I, had, I had YouTube open as well with maps. That kind of experience where I could change the screen size, put one here, put one there, it's undefeated. I can't do that on this. I really can't do that on this, and it, it leaves me not really looking forward to opening it to use the insides. Pause. I love the Pixel Fold, but I love it like a child, where even with its flaws, I'm still gonna say it's the best. When I know objectively, it, it just probably isn't. If it helps you, it helps you. If it doesn't, I don't know. But I think what would have been more forgiving you can't be charging £1,749 to start with, all the way up to £1,869. This should have been no more than a £1,500 dollar phone, even with 512 gig. And in fact, what you should have done is done what Honor did, price at £1,400 slash dollars starting with. And I think all these things that we're talking about would have been much, much more forgiving, even though not fully, fully accepting, but more forgiving and understanding. And that, people, is my full, live, hands-on review of the Pixel Fold five days later. It arrived on Thursday. I got hands-on with it from Friday as I was in Paris. But it's five days later from the Thursday that I came in. That's my experience with you so far, live. Boom! Did it, baby. Did it, and I was sick. <laughs> we made it. We made it, 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 we made it. We hit the two hour mark, which is exactly that. Call this a Snyder Cut edition, you know. This is what we do. Looking forward to your future coverage. Can't wait for the Pixel Fold versus the Fold 5. Thanks for all your hard work, bro. Really, really appreciate that. Pause, very applicable. That was wild. <laughs> Please tell me yeah, you started watching it is where it is with Cameron and Mace. That's literally the best discovery I just discovered recently, yeah? Cameron and Mace? Who thought and who knew Cameron and Mace were that funny? I didn't know. I know we're going off tangent, we're pretty much done. But Cameron and Mace with it is where it is and come and talk to me. Best thing I found out this recently, like, Pause has always been a thing. No homo has always been a thing, but they, they, they take it to a whole new level. I love that show. I love what they're doing, man. Very applicable. That was wild. Yeah, out of pocket. The Fold 4 is more enjoyable to use while open and the Pixel is better closed. Oh, that is literally it. My goodness. Why can't we just have both? I don't like using the Fold 4 clothes, but I love using it open. I love using this clothes, but I don't like using it open. Oh, that was it. That is the best conclusion. That is literally the best conclusion. Dexter Cumberbatch. That is the wrap up and the conclusion to this experience. Damn, 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 damn. That hit different, that hit different. I appreciate that, man. If the phone feels better in use with the display cost, why buy it? Oh, that's, that's, that's deep. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. That's very deep. Well, luckily, I'm only paying $799 with promotions, and I think a lot of people will get into discount and not paying. If so, if so, but... Wow, 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 wow. What an interesting one. Oh my goodness. I'm left, I'm left, I'm left in a, in a stray. But I want to thank everybody that tuned in. I want to personally thank everyone that tuned in. You lot are the reasons why I go as ham as I do to make these live streams what they are. I don't play when it comes to live streams. I enjoy them. I love them. They're my favorite IP in terms of the content that I create on here, next to camera comparisons, next to charging tests. This level of live direction, 
live direct engagement is undefeated, but I always wanna make sure that it's done to a level that isn't low jack. And I really, really appreciate you lot's patience for being here, taking the time. You guys as a live squad, we had up to a peak of like 50 concurrent viewers. And for those that are gonna take time to find this and it looks like a normal video, just be a bit patient, it's a live stream but the quality is that of what a normal pre-recorded video would be. And I hope that you'll be able to take in and see all the live testings that we've done for the display, gaming. We've showcased everything. It's not faked out and it's more accountable when it's live as well. So I appreciate you all. Thank you really, really so much for taking the time out. Big props, show love to Matty as well. Matt, come into the cam, show, show love to everyone. So younger kid, he's, he's, he's been in here showing out. He's been helping. He's my version of Jack. <laughs> He's been doing a great job just, you know, working and manning the cameras and just looking after everything. Um, I think this is just peak levels for us, man. Shout out to Panasonic as well for dropping us a Lumix S5 X2 for camera five. It's really reliable, built-in fan, really, really solid camera as well. We're going to be doing more coverage on why we're switching to that as the main live stream camera away from the A7 IV, so watch out. But for me to you, Ben from Lover of Tech, you, as Team TLS, aka the Tech Number Squad, I appreciate you lot so much. Um, it's been a good one. We're pretty much signing out and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.